we're ready to start looking at something different today. Now I want to teach you the verb ir, which means to go. Okay, I want to teach you a new verb today. And we're going to be able to use the that we just learned in a new context. So we're going to learn the verb ir, which means to go. So I'm going to put that right here. Ir, it's just spelled I-R, and it means to go. And you guessed it, I'm going to draw a chart. Now, last episode we talked about AR verbs. AR verbs are so easy because you just learn the infinitive form of the word. Infinitive just means to do that, to speak, to run, to sleep. Those are infinitives. It's a verb with two in front of it. So we learned how to take those infinitives and take the AR off and apply the pattern. O, as, a, amos, ais, an. Now, as I just mentioned a few uh, minutes ago, there are rules in any language and there are rule breakers. So, I've got to present to you a rule breaker right now. Ir, the verb ir, is a rule breaker. We can't simply take the ending off because there'll be nothing left. It's just two letters, ir. We have to change that verb as it is into something different. So, we're going to have to modify it. We can't say yo ir, I to go. Again, it doesn't make sense. We've got to make our changes. So, I'm going to show you how to make those changes now. Now, ir is one of these interesting verbs because it completely changes its look. It just completely changes. The ir is just going to go away, and we're going to just completely change it. So that's just how it came from Latin. It's a rule breaker. So get ready. I want to give you the forms of ir. These are used all the time in Spanish. Okay, so right up here, when you say I go, that's going to be v-o-y, voy. Remember that V is not a v sound like it is in English, so we're going to say boy, like a light B. Okay, now right down here, you go, somebody you know well, we're going to say vas. Vas. Now down here in the bottom left, we're going to say he goes or she goes, or you, in a respectful way, go. We're going to say va. Okay, so you remember how we did o asa amos aisan, right? Go ahead and start doing this with ir. Boy, vas, va. Boy, bye, bye. Go ahead and get that in your head. Start practicing the conversation so that you just have them completely internalized and you know how to say them really well. So I go is boy, you go is vas, and he goes is el va, she goes is ella va, and you in a respectful way go usted va. Okay? Now let's look at our plural side here. We go is going to be vamos. Vamos. We go. Now, are we are going? It can be the same thing. Sometimes you can say, vamos, let's go. Okay, that's very common in Spanish. <clears throat> now, our vosotros form is going to follow the same ice, just like our AR ending. Notice we're starting to put AR endings on it, right? You start noticing these are the actual AR endings, except for this one. He's the troublemaker. Okay, now, over here we have van. They go. Ellas van, ellos van, you all plural go, you go, ustedes van. Okay, so now let's get the visual here because as I said, we've got AR verb endings. As, a, amos, ais, an. The problem is the yo form. Now, as we go further into Spanish in further episodes, you're going to find that a lot of times when a verb is what we call irregular, when it doesn't follow the pattern exactly, you're going to find that a lot of times it's the yo form that has to be different. That's the troublemaker. And you're going to find a lot of times that the rest of the chart is exactly the same as the endings. It's just getting that yo form and its differences. So we have the forms of to go. Go ahead and start working on them. Voy, vas, va, vamos, vais, van. So I go, yo voy. You go is what? Tu vas. He goes. El va. She goes. Ella va. You, in a ref uh, respectful way, you go. Usted va. We go. Nosotros vamos. What about you go, plural form, the Spain word? Vosotros vais. Okay, now what about they go? How would you say it? Good. Ellos van. 
And finally, the other form of you, plural, how would you say you go? Ustedes van. Now, something you need to understand is that voy and any of these other forms, they mean I go, and they also mean I am going. In Spanish, it's the same mindset. I go, I am going, it's really the same. So it can mean both things because that's actually going to play in in a few minutes when we get further into our episode today. Now, now that we know how to say to go, maybe you want to be able to talk about where you're going to go. So right now, I want to give you a new set of words. So get your cuaderno ready and your lapis and your pluma. Get them ready because I'm going to give you some words that relate to where you go in the town. So we're going to be able to talk about where we go. Here we go. So some words that you can use in a town setting are, one word is la carniceria. Carniceria. That would be a store that sells food such as meats, because carne means meat. And you're going to find that these end with ia, they're stores that sell something in particular. And then there is la farmacia, which means the pharmacy, you guessed it. And then there is la panaderia, which also sells food like bread. And then there is the libreria. Now, before you think that means library, it actually doesn't. It means bookstore. The library, here comes the library, though. It's la biblioteca. It's a different word in Spanish. Don't be fooled by it. And then you have the post office, which is el correo. And then you might want to go to la galería. La galería could be a couple of different things. An art gallery, it could also be a, in some places where you go that they speak Spanish, a galería is like a shopping center. And then there is el museo, the museum. And then we have one of our favorites, el restaurante, the restaurant. And then there is el café. A cafe, a place to go and have a cup of coffee. And then there is one of our other favorites, El Cine, the movie theater. Okay, so now you have a nice list of words, places you can go in town. Now you can talk to your friends about where you're going this weekend or where you're going after school for you students or after work for the rest of you. So let's try to put some of these together. Now, if we want to say, I am going to the post office. We're just going to put some things together here. I'm going to the post office. We've got to do a little change here. So what's I go? Right, yo voy. Yo voy. Now the word to in Spanish, it also means at, to or at, is a. Just the letter a, that actually means to or at. And then the post office is El correo. El correo. Now, here's something we have to remember in Spanish. It's a little rule. A and el, when you have a and el together in Spanish, they have to come together and make a new word. So we're going to change a and el into al. So anytime a and el are together, they become al. You've probably seen al in Spanish before. That's why it's there. It's a mixture of a and el. But now we don't mix any of the other ones. We don't mix la or los and las. We don't mix those. Okay? So I'm going to the post office. Yo voy al correo. All right? Now let's try one of our feminine places that we learned. What about the bookstore? Let's say she is going to the bookstore. She is going to the bookstore. So how would you say she is going? Ella va. You got it. Ella va. Now, how do you say to or at? A. Now, we have the bookstore, which is la libreria. Accent on that I right there. Libreria. So, she is going to the bookstore. Okay? Now remember, we don't combine a and la or anything like that. Okay, so let's give you a couple to try on your own here. How would you say, it's the weekend, how would you say, we are going to the restaurant. We are going to 
the restaurant. Think about it. Okay. Los otros vamos. We are going to the restaurant. Remember, the restaurant is feminine. It's a masculine, so we're going to say the. It's el, and it combines to become al restaurante. Okay? Let's try one more together. They are going to the movie theater. Think about it. Ellos van al cine. Good. And one final one. Let's do one more feminine place. How would you say they are going to the bookstore? Let's try that one again. They are going to the bookstore. Ellos van a la librería. Great. Now, <clears throat> you know how to say where you're going and what you're going to be doing this weekend, so I encourage you to start practicing that. I have one more thing to show you using the verb ir today in this lesson. Okay, to wrap up the show today, I want to give you a new way to use the verb ir. And this is real simple because it's exactly like English. Now, I'm going to teach you a formula. It's called ir plus a plus infinitive. Now, I told you infinitive is just a fancy way to say a verb with the word to in front of it. To sleep, to run, to talk, those are all infinitives, right? So, put this together. If this is a verb that means to do something, and ir means go or going, think about it. When would I use ir plus a plus infinitive in Spanish? When I'm going to do something. So, if you ever say, I am going to do something, we're going to use the phrase ir plus a plus infinitive, that formula. So, we're going to use it with a verb. Let's pretend we're going to say, I am going to pay. So, we're going to say, I'm going, voy. That's our form of ir. Now, we have to put the word a. A doesn't really make sense when we try to translate it back to English, but it has to be there. And to pay, remember from another episode, we learned AR verbs. Pagar is to pay. We're going to leave the AR on it because if we leave the AR, it means to do that. So, I'm going to pay. Voy a pagar. Now, you can use that with any verb in Spanish. She is going to do something. We are going to do something. Use the formula. Ir plus a plus infinitive. And that's a very simple way for you to expand your conversation in a great way. Because now you can talk about where you're going and what you're going to do. Today's lesson was all about going places, places in town, and the verb ir, to go. Well, since we're talking about that, our cultura section, I wanted to talk a little bit about shopping in Central and South America. Now, outdoor markets are very, very popular in Central and South America. Uh, outdoor markets, and you'll see these small buildings in many countries, and inside those buildings, you have what are called puestos, little stalls and people operate those and they sell their own items in each one of those little puestos. Now, when you're going to do some shopping in a Spanish-speaking country, the first thing you always want to do is know the value of your dollar. So here are a few examples. If you're in Guatemala, uh, where I was recently, you'll find that seven quetzales, their money is called quetzales, seven of those roughly is about one dollar. And it's about the same in Bolivia and South America. So know how much you're spending. Now, I've been to La Cancha in Bolivia, in Cochabamba, the largest outdoor south, uh, market in South America. Now, you find that there are many different things you can buy, but always think about what you're paying for that item. Now, many people tell me, well, can't you haggle with the price? Can't you, can't you get them down a little bit? Well, you can usually, sometimes you can. But I like to always be mindful of other people and the situation they're in. So think about what you're, you're paying for that particular item. And while you can get them down somewhat, many times you have to think, they're trying to make a living. So you'll find it's a really good price and it seems fair. So if, if that's the situation, you go ahead and buy it and help that person out a little bit making a living. Well, it's time to go. If you'd like to send me a comment or a question, you can do so at es at aibtv.com. I'd love to hear from you. 
And until I see you next time, I wish paz y bendiciones for you and yours. And we'll see you next time on Que Hora Es. Hasta pronto.